Welcome back to Analysis. Talks began in Tunisia this week, aimed at ending months of political crisis in the country. Against the backdrop of rising tensions and violence against the security forces, the ruling Islamists and the opposition parties will agree on a new caretaker prime minister who will take over until fresh elections are held. Since the 2011 revolt, when Tunisians threw out their decades-old authoritarian government, the country has seen a rise in attacks by militants. Three days of national mourning was declared last week for the deaths of seven police officers killed by militants in a targeted attack. The murder of two prominent opposition leaders, Chokri Balaid and Mohamed Barim, in separate attacks by militants earlier in the year, sparked mass anti-government protests, creating a situation of political stalemate. Despite the ruling Enada party condemning the killings, criticism has fallen upon them for failing to rein in radical extremists. Prime Minister Ali Larayed says Enada is ready to resign, paving the way for Tunis's transition into democracy, but with tensions still running high and militant influence growing, is there a chance of long-term stability? With me in the studio to discuss this are Mamoun Alabasi, a political analyst, and joining us by Skype, we have Nouradine Meladi, professor of mass communication at Qatar University. Mahmoud, is there a chance for stability given the present situation? Um, yes, very much so. I think, uh, especially after the terrible experience in Egypt, Tunisians are much more careful not to walk down that road, even though there are some radical elements who want to drag the country into some for form of chaos or even civil war. Uh, the majority um, know that there's just too much at stake. Um, their tourism at stake, their stability is at stake, the economy is at stake. So um, I don't think... You know, I don't think they will follow the Egyptian road. And what do you think is the real cause of this current political stalemate? Um, th there are a number of factors. I mean, to begin with, there's the obvious uh, inexperience of the whole country. They've never experienced democracy before. So that's just... There are natural um, problems. But to add to that, there is a, a counter-revolutionary movement and some remnants of the old regime are still there in the media, in the judiciary, in the civil servants. Civil service, sorry. Um, they don't want to let go. They don't want um, uh, new faces to come and take over. And uh, in, during this struggle, as a result, um, the, the average Tunisian population has suffered. Nouradin, a combination of political inexperience and the remnants of the old guard. What's your opinion on that? Well, certainly, yeah. To a large extent, it is a complex situation, uh, like um, other countries from the Arab Spring um, um, region. Uh, I mean, in Tunisia, I'm glad that um, uh, the Tunisians, for the moment at least, uh, opposition and also the coalition parties are, in a way, uh, teaming together to try to um, come out from this uh, bottleneck, if, if I may call it so, uh, because the country came, came to a kind of um, a deadlock, in a way. Um, I think the complex situation, obviously, is partly the, uh, the, 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 the inexperience of um, running a country from the coalition party, whether it is Anahda or um, uh, the Marzouki party uh, 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 or Atakatul, which is... Um, uh, also the, 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 the other member of the, of the coalition. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, there are many others who um, do not wish um, um, any stability for the country. Uh, those who are still entrenched in the bureaucracy of the, of, the, of, the, of the state, those who are partly in the in probably previous intelligence and um, they managed to um, uh, kind of cave in and um, uh, stir troubles. But also the, um, the, the, the issue of the extremist um, uh, groups that um, managed to infiltrate the Tunisian society and managed to probably to, uh, to find um, a, a refuge in some of the um, mountains in the southern part of the country and so forth. And unfortunately, those have become, in a way, for the moment, a real threat to the stability of the country. I mean, Tunisia has never had experience with Al-Qaeda, for example. It didn't have experience with... Um, 
the way, for instance, Algeria suffered during the last uh, two decades and, 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 and so. Uh, this is becoming, unfortunately, a, a reality. Um, I'm glad that the government and the coalition and uh, all the political parties are, are really uh, taking a, um, a, a, a kind of um, a, a strict and very strong measures with regard to the attitude on how to deal with this. But there is a, um, a consensus on abhorring terrorism and try to approve terrorism from whether 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 it's coming from a kind of uh, a group that calls Islamic uh, itself but Islamist or any other group, be it secular or what have you. Nouradine, would you agree with the criticism or do you think it's unfair that the Troika were slow, and particular in Ada, were slow to act on the threat of external terrorism? Well, I wouldn't think so, to be honest. I mean, they, they, they were slow on, on, on other things, in my opinion. They were slow on um, 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 probably uprooting, uprooting the, 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 um, uh, the roots of corruption in the country, first of all, to begin with, since they took over power in the, in the country a couple of years ago. I think this is where the, the, the key issue of the problem started, in my opinion. Uh, the inefficiency of the government, the inefficiency of the Troika started um, uh, to, to, to surface when they haven't managed to, uh, to remove key, um, I call them rusty figures from the previous regime. And they are still everywhere in the media. They're controlling the, the, the media, or at least a huge part of the Tunisian media, especially the uh, public service broadcasting, um, uh, radio and television. They are also controlling, uh, I mean, large part, uh, large sector of the economy. They are also uh, there entrenched in the bureaucracy of the country. Unfortunately, many of those have been actually stirring troubles during the last couple of years. Now, the coalition that is, that is a, a kind of an undercurrent, an underground coalition. Uh, but, uh, I mean, many Tunisians will see it. Uh, a teaming up between uh, corrupt politicians and also uh, uh, journalists, those who would like to show that uh, nothing is good in the country. The revolution has come with only catastrophic uh, repercussions. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, all of those, we've been witnessing them. I think this is the first problem, and this is the first failure, in my opinion, by this government. Um, uh, I may slightly agree that the government could have taken strong measures from the beginning with regard to um, um, uh, extremist groups. But, I mean, I would like to tell you, this is a new phenomenon. Tunisians are not familiar with this. They didn't expect that there are Tunisians out there who are willing to go and kill and maim and bomb their fellow Tunisians, be they from the army or from the police or uh, politicians. I mean, mm -hmm. we've, we've seen the example of uh, political assassinations. Tunisia has never seen has never seen this for the last three decades, for example, except when Ben Ali, I mean, decided to um, um, uh, to, 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 to to kill some of his opponents um, um, uh, live. I mean, um, a couple of decades ago. But apart from that, we haven't seen, um, I mean, this kind of bloodshed that is taking place for the moment. Nadim, I just want to ask, Mohamed, do you, how big a threat is this external extremism coming into the country that's so unfamiliar to Tunisians? Um, well, ironically, its threat is as big as the opposition allows it to be, because the opposition has caused a, a state of chaos the security forces are um, busy with protests and uh, um, dis disruption of the peace elsewhere that they can no longer focus on, on terror. And uh, funnily enough, every, every terrorist attack is in, um, politically is in favor of what the opposition wants. I mean, the, the first person to, uh, that stands to lose is the, is the government from those, mm -hmm. uh, from those assassinations so. and those attacks. So it's really funny that the interest of the um, extremists who are on the religious side have met with the extremist, with the interests of the extremists on the secular side, uh, both gaining from this sense of instability and both feeding off each other uh, in, from this chaos, sense of chaos. I've been to Tunis on a number of occasions in the last year and I've met with a group that call themselves the Rejectionists and they right. are youth leaders from various backgrounds. Some are um, Marxists, some are nationalists, some are Salafists, but they all have one thing in common and that they feel the revolution has been stolen from them. They're critical of the, what Nadine would say, the rusty figures and the established order prior to the revolution, as well as the new Troika party. Now, um, do you think they have grounds for 
their criticism and the reaction to the current government? Of course. Um, every opposition uh, party, opposition member, every member of the public has ground uh, for criticism, and there is plenty to criticise. Um, the issue is not, um, is this a perfect government or is this a, a, a total uh, failure? Um, th there is a ground for, for criticism, but the issue is how far do you take it? Do you mm. overthrow the whole process of democracy or do you try to work to uh, pressure where there is place for pressure to, mm. to bring about improvements instead of bringing the whole thing together upside down? And Nadim, do you think they can be incorporated into the new political system? And if so, what steps should be taken to engage them? Well, certainly, I mean, the, um, the, uh, the another party and also the, uh, the rest of the coalition um, uh, need to um, um, make uh, a bigger effort with regard to outreaching even to the youth from their wings, uh, let alone talking about the rest of the society. I think there has been a kind of um, 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 uh, weakness with regard to um, uh, trying to engage young people, those who made the huge contribution to the to the revolution of um, 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 the 14th of um, the 14th of um, uh, January um, uh, 2011. Um, the Anahda uh, during the last couple of years, um, uh, I mean, obviously has been very very busy with uh, the. Um, uh, the government itself, the machine of the government, trying to um, make sure that this experience does not fail. But at the same time, they really made lots of mistakes with regard to um, um, uh, failing to outreach to the wider society. Another for the moment in my uh, personal assessment, and I've seen it in very places, it's, it's, it's losing part of the, its popularity, part of its um, um, strength in the different parts of the country for this very reason, which is uh, being very much engrossed into um, the political machine into the state machine and probably forgetting about serving society at large and um, outreaching and engaging younger people. Um, uh, in, 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 in the same way, unfortunately, when we think about the opposition, I mean, the opposition very much has been engaged into uh, not to let the coalition succeed in its mission in reforming the country. This is a very fact of why we have lots of problems now. We have an opposition in the country, unfortunately. Um, that is not. The, 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 it does not. It does not have an alternative. It's, no, uh, its only mission, in my opinion, is really to to, 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 to dig a wedge into the government but kind of machine or wheel. If if the uh, estimations of the polling is correct, that the opposition would get thirty percent, and Nada would get thirty percent. If they want to rule the country, they need some sort of level of cooperation or sufficient consensus. Do both, do both of you see the possibility of those that represented the old order coming together with the new political realities to work together for the common good of the country? Do you think that's a realistic option or is it daydreaming? No. I think I think it's possible. Uh, sorry, I think it's still possible um, if the those who are on the fringes don't ruin it and drag everybody with them. So far, we, they've got the political landscape is divided into three main uh, blocks. You've got Al Nahda and its uh, minor allies. You've got the Popular Front, uh, leftist, and the well, the, it's Nida, which most people see it as the former RCD, the former party of, mm -hmm. of Ben Ali. These are the three biggest chunks at the moment in Tunisia. Um, there are those who are part of them or on the fringes inside them, and they want to bring down the whole process in order to isolate the current, um, the supporters of al yes. so that they would, have a, they would return to the old ways of having... Um, a ruling elite. And, uh, that's it. Yes, and, that's and, it. and the voice not. Nadine, yeah. please do, do join us. Yeah, I... I think, I mean, to add to that is, is, is really to, to, to state uh, what I see as the fact, which is um, the key failure of the, of, the, of the opposition, in a way, uh, nowadays is, 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 is not being able to provide an alternative uh, to remedy, for example, the economic system, to uh, find solutions for the um, 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 uh, problematics of the education system, to find problems for the transportation, to um, ease up the livelihood of millions of people uh, especially in the inner parts of the country, I think I think this is this is really the the the, 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 the real failure of the opposition, um, because they've been very much engaged and very busy with causing problems to the government, criticizing the government, 
uh, and not at the same time pro providing the solutions into the problems um, uh, from which the country is suffering from. So uh, th this obviously will work in, the, in, in, in favor of, of another and in favor of the coalition parties, because at the end of the day, people see, I mean, uh, day and night, uh, who is causing problems, who is calling for uh, demonstrations and calling for strikes and, and, and up and down the country. I mean, we've witnessed probably the highest uh, percentage or the highest ratio of strikes any country has ever seen, in my opinion, in the world. It's, it's, it's amazing that um, uh, in spite of the number of strikes everywhere, I mean, you, you name it, yeah. since uh, the last two years, but, but still, the country is, 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 is still functioning. The economy is still functioning. But when you go back to the days of 2011, bread, dignity, development was the cry of the young people in the street. Yeah. As I said earlier, a yeah. lot of those young people feel that those demands have not been met in the sense they don't see the options for a future and the sort of job that will help them develop. Now, do you think, unless the current national dialogue ends in some sort of agreement where people can work together to deliver the expectations of those young people. Do you yeah. think Tunisia has uh, a chance of surviving this current crisis? I think I think I think the country has um, uh, has honestly a very good uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, optimism or option to um, to um, uh, to survive. I mean the the, the, the current crisis. But um, I think um, uh, the key to that will be. That um, everyone comes out from um, uh, these uh, discussions with a, um, uh, a clear mission statement that they will be working together in um, um, uh, running the country uh, in conjunction to each other. Because um, uh, what has been going on during the last two years, obviously, is that um, Anahda and his coalition have been have sidelined everybody else, and everybody else have left. That um, they've been sidelined from having a share in running the the, the country mm -hmm. after the revolution. I think unless all of those um, 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 uh, parties from, from from the left to the nationalists to the Islamists to uh, to others will come together and try to bring in a government which is which is representative of everyone. I think unless we have this, it will not be easy really to um, have hope for the for the future of the country because. I, I, I would lay, I would like to state something very important at, at this at this at, at, at this position because because um, the, the, the type of problems are in a way chronic in the country. You name it. When you say the economy, the health service, the transportation, the education, everything, it's 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 really everywhere. You have chronic issues, and no government by itself or no party by itself will be able to sort out those problems. Mm. There has to be a collective effort whereby everyone in a very positive way, they come together and say, yes, we want to, go to do it, but we want to put hands in hands together and do it and do it together. Unless we think that way, I don't think there would be very much hope in uh, coming out of the, of, the, of, the, of the bottleneck. I think I very much agree with, uh, with Nora Dean. Um, the, one, one good thing about Tunisians is that they are very uh, they're very peaceful. They are very also um, uh, keen on, on progress. So they won't do what some other countries did as to cut off their nose to spite their face. They will, they will not go that far. Um, another problem is I think even people at the, in the government and in al Nada, they will probably breathe a sigh of relief once they are out of power and waiting the coming elections so that they prove to whoever comes next that it's really a tough task to clean up. a 50-year-old legacy of corruption um, to the root, whether it's security uh, forces, they've, I mean, they've been brought up in a, uh, in a system that abuses or doesn't believe in human rights, um, um, corruption, bribery across all sectors. And, and to clean that up in, in, in a year or two, and it's a mess that like, goes back from independence, is really a, d a tough job. So they probably welcome whoever comes next mm -hmm. to, to show them that. Uh, but what they don't we want to do is to be um, wiped off the political map altogether, and that's what they fear, and that's what some aim to do. Mahmoud, we have a little time, and I'd like to address a question to both of you. What role do you think the media has played in coming to this current crisis? In, in Tunisia, unbelievably negative. 
mm. unbelievable. To the, to the extent that it's the uh, spearhead of the counter-revolution. Um, when you have people that you know who are intelligent and you trust, and they, they believe or follow news that is totally unbelievable out of this world, and you've got respectable authors, I won't mention their names, they have articles fabricated in their name, mm. and it's shared on Facebook and Twitter by the thousands. And people believe that whoever's saying this is true. Noreddin, this is your area of expertise. Yes, what, um, I, what, 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 what can be done? Order... What can be yes, done what... to change the media's attitude in Tunisia? Uh, I mean, when you try to, to unpack the, the, the role of the media in the country, you have uh, really uh, uncovered or opened up a kind of worms. Uh, it had, I mean, the media have been really playing um, um, a very counter-revolutionary role. And I'm here not really a kind of um, 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 uh, making a blank uh, statement about everybody. Obviously, there are uh, quite a few media outlets there who are trying their best, especially those that are set up after the revolution. But uh, I'm to here talking about, for example, the public service broadcasting that is meant to be uh, serving the, the state, that is meant to be serving the public. It's not, in my uh, uh, personal assessment, uh, of any service to the, to, the, to, the, to, to, to the public who are paying the license fees in, the, in, in, in Tunisia. We have, we have a, um, um, a, a kind of paradox between uh, uh, freedom of opinion at the same time um, the, 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 um, the, 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 the attitude of um, uh, not having any um, um, uh, borders about what is ethical and what is not ethical, what is good for the country and what is not. Um, um, the, 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 um, uh, I, th I think we have a, um, a, a kind of um, uh, an army of journalists who are there, part of the counter-revolutionary um, guards of the of the Ben Ali no, regime, Redeem. and they are still there in the public I'm afraid, service, the papers and everywhere. Sorry to interrupt you. We're running out of time. It's just a quick question, a very quick question to both of you. Will this national dialogue succeed or not succeed? Quick answer. I, I hope so. All I can say is that I hope so. There's there's no way of telling. And Noreddin? Let's hope that this will succeed. Let's hope, and hopefully we will be able to bring much more positive news because Tunisia is where the Arab Spring began, and let's hope we will see it develop into a real summer where there is real opportunity for all the levels of Tunisian society to benefit from the transition. Thank you.